My name's Quick Picnic, and here's your locks and lotteries for the Week 13 main slate of action on FanDuel and DraftKings this Sunday, December 5th, featuring full lineups for both platforms at the end of the video. Getting right into it at quarterback, there are two locks both leagues ahead of any other quarterback in terms of expected value and price point projections. Those quarterbacks are Jalen Hurts and Derek Carr, the latter of which is especially value on DraftKings with a significantly lower cost. The status of Hurts is still up in the air, but if he's able to suit off, then facing a bottom three Jets defense with respect to allowed passing yards and bottom five and allowed rushing yards sets up Hurts to have a massive massive day on both fronts, ranking as the second most rushing quarterback. As for Carr, Washington's pass defense also ranks bottom three, and with Carr currently leading the NFL in passing yards, that's right, first place, yeah, who knew? Carr should be able to continue his quietly dominant season. Both of these picks should be viable in any lineup, but if you're looking for more of a household name, then Tom Brady is a solid lottery quarterback who's a bit more expensive than Hurts, but has a great matchup against Atlanta as the second overall quarterback in passing yards, just behind Derek Carr. At running back, the two best locks my model found were regular season Leonard Fournette and jack-of-all-trades Cordero Patrick. Patterson. In addition to their weak secondary, Atlanta also ranks bottom 10 in allowed rushing yards, and with Fournette breaking off over 40 fantasy points last week, including three touchdowns, the Falcons don't seem like the team to stop this steamroller. On the other side of the ball, Patterson should be able to have a big game against Tampa Bay, too, because although the Buccaneers are known for their stout rush defense, Patterson makes up for that through the air as the top receiving running back in the NFL. And Tampa Bay's secondary is the much weaker component of their defense, allowing around 250 passing yards per game. At this point, I also want to mention two players who I kind of consider locks since all of my model simulations had at least one of these guys in their lineups, if not both, and they are Jonathan Taylor and Joe Mixon. I didn't really feel like locking in the two most expensive guys, but they're that expensive for good reason. Jonathan Taylor is starting to look like an even younger Derrick Henry as the number one player with respect to rushing yards and rushing touchdowns this season. Houston's defense couldn't stop a golf cart, let alone this bulldozer coming to town from Indy, making his massive cost still worth a second look. Same goes for Mixon, except to a slightly lesser extent. Mixon currently ranks third in season-long rushing yards, but has a much better matchup against the Chargers, allowing the most rush yards to opponents in the NFL, which should be simple enough to understand why you might want to take a player of that caliber against a defense of that caliber. Aside from those four main locks, of which you should be able to get at least two picks in your lineup, some cheaper lotteries I was able to find include Antonio Gibson, carrying the ball 24 times per game across his past three contests, including two games above 20 fantasy points. James Conner, kind of expensive for what he's worth, but facing a surprisingly bad Bears rush defense with the second most rushing touchdowns this season, and Jamal Williams, taking over starting responsibilities in Detroit with DeAndre Swift's current sidelined facing Minnesota's bottom three rush defense. At receiver, the best lock my model found is Deontay Johnson, who is at least a full scroll down the price list, yet one of the best options for this slate. Baltimore currently ranks dead last in the NFL in allowed passing yards, and with Deontay Johnson ranking in the top 10 in that same category with top five targets and receptions per game, Big Ben and the city of Pittsburgh alike will want to see their guy tear it up against the Ravens. Additionally, Johnson has been targeted no less than 13 times in four of his past five contests, meaning he will get the opportunity. And against Baltimore, those opportunities should turn into massive points. Another pick who could almost be considered a lock, if not the top of the lotteries, is Hunter Renfro. Still with a surprisingly low cost, yet filling in as the definitive top receiving threat with the definitive top passer of Derek Carr against Washington's poor pass defense. Plus, Darren Waller probably isn't going to play this week, opening the door even further for Renfro and his low price tag. Now just to list off the lottery receivers that were found here and there across my simulations, Cooper Cup is obviously relevant. Even with his big price tag, facing the two-win Jaguars in LA as the top receiver and pretty much every relevant category, ranking first in yards, touchdowns, receptions, and targets this season. Justin Jefferson could also be an interesting pick, facing the still winless Lions, and the same goes for Adam Thielen. Although Jefferson seems to be the more popular option in my model with a slightly higher cost, but more consistent season-long production. Some others include Mike Evans benefiting alongside Tom Brady against Atlanta, and seemingly a more valuable option than his compatriot Chris Godwin, but picking between the two is always going to be a toss-up. Keenan Allen scoring double digits five weeks in a row with at least 10 targets in each, this time facing an on-the-decline Cincinnati defense. Mike Williams, your budget Keenan Allen, also facing a declining Bengals, but with a less consistent opportunity than Allen. And Devontae Smith, who seems risky since he doesn't typically get many opportunities with the ball. But against New York's wide-open secondary, we might see a long touchdown for the rookie, which would really be all we need. Moving to tight end, one definitive lock my model had in most lineups is Rob Gronkowski, who's far cheaper than I would have expected given his dominant return to action. Since his comeback two weeks ago, Gronk has caught 15 balls for a total of nearly 200 yards, and Atlanta won't be able to stop this trend of lots of catches for lots of yards.
Some other lotteries I found were George Kittle, also having a very impressive return from injury, kind of acting as a Gronk light at a lower cost. Kyle Pitts facing Tampa Bay's weak secondary, complementing Cordero Patterson, and TJ Hawkinson, one of the only remaining bright spots on the Lions looking to show up in a big divisional rivalry. For the flex, I've just given you dozens of options to choose from, and at defense, try to save as much money as possible while avoiding any blowouts. This time, we have to go a bit up from the bottom to find those defenses, including Washington, the Chargers on FanDuel, the Bears, or the Giants on DraftKings. With all that being said, here are my two favorite lineups for FanDuel and DraftKings. If you made it this far, subscribe so you don't miss any future daily fantasy videos or lineups, and thanks for watching.